Or oh, not, even in terms of stories, whether you're living on the continent and still writing about other things, and even the things you choose to write about, be it um, fantasy or really like imaginative world, or things that just like I said before weren't taken as seriously before as sure. what should be serious African literature. We have people now who are in the Achebe mode, in the way he spoke for himself and his generation, we have people speaking to new identities. There's a much louder um, um, voice regarding literature about queer narratives in Nigeria and in Africa. Also, just as regards a lot of other things, right? People are doing more interesting things with language and with form and with genre as well. Sure. So what is, when you say African literature, I think it's constantly being redefined and it should be allowed to evolve. I don't think sure. we should look to um, define it and create a box, but it should be allowed to evolve the same way um, literature everywhere else has evolved into, I mean, American literature has gone beyond just being um, the Faulkner type, Fitzgerald type of novel, right? It's so many things now, and we should allow our literature to evolve as well, in my opinion. Did you want to add something? Adam? Yeah, I mean, it's always problematic, you know, to be called an African writer, especially it depends on who is calling you an African writer. I mean, if you called me an African writer in Nigeria, I wouldn't mind, you know? because we know what we're talking about. Yes. But if you are called an African writer outside of Nigeria or yes. outside of Africa, then there's a certain assumption that you can only be this kind of writer. It's trying to put you in a little space, in a little box. So it's always problematic. But you have to go back to how that term that you know, kind of originated. It began with the um, Pan-Africanist movement, sure. you know, with the anti-colonial movement and basically everybody at that time was happy to be called African um, and were kind of projecting one unified front against colonialism. Sure. And we had similarities in our culture, in our tradition and everything because we're facing the same challenges. So it was actually easier to be called an African writer at that time, which was a very positive thing. Then you had independence and then you have these countries and now it becomes more problematic. Am I just Am I an African writer or am I a Nigerian writer? Am I a Ghanaian writer? And then it gets even more difficult because the relationship, I think, of the African with the nation state is always going to be a difficult one. Of course, yes. Because by saying that I'm a Nigerian writer, I'm actually kind of accepting the colonial. Well, it's, it's very hard to say what's Nigerian anyway. Yes. Then it becomes, you're also accepting the the, the, the fact that this nation was kind of arbitrarily yes. constructed by the colonialists, so you're kind of endorsing it. Yeah. So it's, sometimes it's easier to be an Igbo writer. Mm. At least mm. that you can say that you're an Igbo writer, mm. you're a Yoruba writer, or mm. whatever. But to say you're a Nigerian writer is kind of, you know, is very vague. What is, the, what is the Nigerian personality? Because you could say that this is a British novel and it's conveying this British, you know, Ideology. ideals. Yes. But what's the Nigerian ideal? We're still trying to imagine it. Yes. So every book that we write now is kind of adding towards that. Sure. Eventually, we're going to arrive at what a Nigerian ideal is. But our writings, our theories, our songs, and everything we do is kind of gearing towards that. Yeah. Um, I think I just want to start off by saying that um, I sort of want to reclaim the African writer um, label, right? So I'm an African writer. I have no issues with that. But I'm also aware of the burden that that carries in certain spaces. But then my duty in that space mm -hmm. is, to, is to disrupt what being African or being an African writer mm -hmm. means, sure. rather than rejecting the label completely, because sure. that doesn't help at all, right? And um, having said that, um, I think that this anxiety about who's an African writer, what's an African writer, that we get on panels, even in Africa, sure. right, isn't an anxiety that writers from other places face. Sure. British writers don't sit around thinking, no, am I a British writer or am I not, <laughs> right? Because they know, you know, I could be writing whatever and still be called a British writer. American sure. writers don't get put on panels and get asked, you know, who's an American writer, sure. for example. Unless, of course, you're asking about you know, race and ethnicity and uh, racism sure. and ethnicity and, and identity in the Trump of era, in sure. the era of Trump, Trump. Yes, sorry. Yes, yes, See, he's yes. even confusing yeah. me, which is, <laughs> you know, which is, which, yeah, which is something completely different, right? Um, and so being aware of, of you know, of, I mean, it's, it's like I lived in Belgium for many years. I lived in Belgium for 15 years. 
And um, just a quick anecdote, right? So I had, a master, I had a BA, I had a master's, I was working on my PhD, and I wanted a job. I wanted to sort of like take a break and sort of like you know, regain my sanity. And so I walk into an employment office, and I say hello to the woman working there. And I say very, like, I'm very polite, I say very politely, <laughs> I'm looking for a job. She takes one look at me, she sees black, she sees woman, she sees foreign, and then she says, yeah, I've got a job for you. Hmm. We need a cleaner, you can start today. Yeah. So I said, well, I need a cleaner too, because I absolutely, I don't mind, I hate cleaning, you know, I, hate, I, don't, I don't like cleaning at all. But, you know, so I'm aware that there are spaces where you are, yeah. and these levels acquire, you yes. know, different burdens, right? And my duty in that space at that time, or my obligation, right? Is to confront, it's, it's to be confrontational and yes. to disrupt it. So that next time you see a black person or you see an African writer, you don't think, okay, I know all about African writers. African writers just, just don't write, you know, fantasy. Yes. They yes. just don't write political fiction. They just yes. don't write whatever. We do a lot of other things. And I think the more we write, and I mean, we're all different people, and we, we all have like different interests, right? And so the more we present these things as African, yes. right, the more we disrupt that notion that being an African writer is this monolithic thing that we have to be anxious about. Sure. Thank you so much. OK, let's open it up to the audience. Um, what we're going to do is, if we have enough time, we will uh, take a first you know, set of questions and then let them answer and then um, take another set. All right. Any, any questions? Okay. Okay. So there's. Sorry. Is is someone handing out a? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Um, my question is um, for Chika. Uh, do you think that um, things fall apart inadvertently put pressure on generations of African writers to be only? to only write about culture and disruption and politics. And then the other question is for Namdi. I can see your bias for Equency. Do you think that Equency should have been the Achebe? Because you've been, you've been talking about it. And I, I kind of understand where you're coming from, seeing as Equency was writing African stories that were human in an era where Africans were dehumanized. So do you think that Equency should have been the Achebe of his time? Thank you. OK, so we will take another one. Um, any other questions for now? OK, I thought I saw a hand over there. OK, yes. Yeah, that's, OK, well, okay, OK, sure. Um, when I teach this novel, I think increasingly my students want to talk about gender. And on the one hand, you have people uh, like Karen King, Arivi Sala, making the argument that it's a sort of feminist novel because it shows almost the um, implosion of a certain flawed idea of masculinity. On the other hand, many of my students, I think especially women students, find the um, abuse of women deeply offensive and say, why are we even reading this novel? So I'm curious about your, your take on that. OK, so we will take those three first. And then um, if we have enough time, we'll take um, another set. I think that, well, thanks for that question, first of all. But I think that any novel that does well puts a pressure on, on the novels that come after it. Secondly, publishers are also incredibly lazy sometimes, right? It's well for you. And so um, I can imagine that agents who were sending out books by Africans in those years would also write, oh, this is like a book. Very much like they would do now.